Today, I'm gonna to be viewing and critiquing your lifting videos. I do this regularly for all of my members on Gambaru Method, but this is the first time that I've opened it up to anybody to submit their videos. So if you guys enjoy this style of video, let me know in the comments below and I'll announce more openings for submissions in the future. In the meantime, if you wanna skip the queue and have me review your lifting, I recommend getting a membership to Gambaru. You get access to all of my training programs for a variety of goals and levels, along with a nutrition calculator, diet tracker, hundreds of educational videos covering everything from biomechanics to programming, supplementation, and more, and access to the private members community, where I'm available to answer any of your questions at any time and review your lifting technique. Hit the link in the description below to get a free trial. Anyway, let's take a look now at some of these lifting videos, shall we? We're gonna start off with a, what looks like a squat video from veggie underscore lifts. All right, good, the sound's off so I don't get any copyright strikes. Uh, all right. So we've got a low bar position, she's clearly a power lifter. She's got, what, 125 kilograms there, I think, depending on what those blacks are. Is she? All right, okay. Anabolic toe taps. Good position and good tightness there. Mmm. All right. Okay, so we, we got a little bit to, um, to, to, to review here. Let's, um, let's back right up. <laughs> let's back right up to the start here. I don't know how many of you guys noticed this, but this first position right here, right there. Um, first of all, this isn't wrong, this isn't bad, this isn't dangerous at all. This here is just a display of her internal rotation ability at the femur. This is what a lot of lifters do, okay? They'll do some kind of like shaking ritual, they'll tw twiddle their legs around, they'll get under the bar, and for veggie underscore lifts here, her go-to is to show how much internal rotation she has as she sort of like wrenches herself in. Um, not bad, but it just shows us that maybe something through her hip structure or maybe also through her musculature with her external rotators. Maybe those muscles are a bit more lengthened, maybe they're not as strong, maybe she's, for whatever reason, dominating more internal rotation. Um, that's what we kind of displayed in, in, the actual, um, in the actual squat as well, which we'll come back to in a sec. Um, but yeah, that's something I just, I just noticed, like, ah, oh, interesting, interesting. All right, so lift off. I actually thought she was going to um, squat right here, strangely enough, because she took quite a long time getting set up, it took a big breath. To me, <laughs> that looks like someone who was about to lift, uh, not walk back. But again, nothing wrong with that. That's a fantastic little pre-game ritual that she has. When it comes to lifting the heaviest weights possible, which I'm guessing is what part of her goal is, being that she's taking such a specific power lifting um, technique and setup. Um, Taking as much time as you need to, to go through your own specific, well-rehearsed ritual of unracking the bar, walking it out, very, very, very important, very, very underrated and overlooked by a lot of lifters. And it does make a huge difference to just make sure your body's prepared to lift that weight. Um, and I'm sure she would do something similar for her very first starting weight on maybe like a barbell or a very light weight, all the way up to, um, to this heavy weight here. All right, so let's have a look at what's going on with the actual squat. Once she descends, right there. All right, you can already see this position here. You can see how much her knees have already started to collapse inwards and her body's biasing that internal rotation. It's hard to see specifically based on the footwear that she's wearing and also just like the quality of the video, but it looks like she's got a pretty stable stance overall with her with her feet. Um, if we go through this frame by frame, watching her ankles, yeah, you can see how her ankles collapsing in here. I'm not even looking at the knees right now, I was looking at her at the ankles. Um, okay, you can see right there. Look at that little bit of deviation in her foot pressure on that right foot. See how here to here, she's lifting that little toe up. 
she's rolling inwards. And by the looks of it, that's that right knee where that right pinky toe's lifting off, that right knee is collapsing in more um, than the left, although it could just be the angle of the, um, of the video here. So she's pushing more through the ball of the foot and the big toe and rolling in her ankle and pronating her foot. Um, all of this is just typical of that internal rotation. And then she, oh, that's, that's a lot that you can really see it there, prominent there. So maybe her stance really isn't stable, especially on that, on that right leg. And bang, she lifts the weight up. All right, so first of all, well, not first, we've already spoken about a few things, but this is a really strong lifter, okay? She's got a fair amount of weight there. I don't know what her body weight is. I wouldn't be surprised if it's close to, if not more than double body weight. Um, and technique aside, hey, power to you. This is actually a really, really, really good lift. And in terms of competition standards for power, power lifting um, meat, should do fantastic. And honestly, as much as I, I cringe, or you might cringe looking at this, um, it's not horrible. It's not horrible, it's not bad, and it's not inherently dangerous. Are her knees going to explode? Is she going to break her back? Is she going to collapse and burst into flames um, just from doing this? Probably not. But what I do know is long term doing this more and more and more again, what's happening is she is exposing her body, look at her foot there, um, to a lot of instability, and there's a lot of noise that needs to be managed there, which could be margin for error with um, technique and maybe going to places where her body can't handle or stabilize or have the strength to support. And she's definitely also putting a lot more stress through her knees and through her lower back. Now, is that inherently bad? Is that inherently dangerous? Not at all. Okay, like, I don't like saying this, but I think it's very, very important to note it, um, is that this here is not a guarantee of injury. This here is not a death sentence. This does not mean that you're going to be crippled and that you shouldn't lift. I would say, you know what, veggie underscore lifts, keep lifting, keep squatting. And this is part of your sport is you're going to be pushing the limits. Okay, this is clearly close to a one rep max. You're going to see technique break down like this. It's useful because it tells us what we should be looking at improving with her training, which is what we're gonna to get to um, after I've done this full breakdown here. Um, but overall, just because there's more stress and there's more force going through a joint like the knee or through the lower back region as well, doesn't mean that she's necessarily going to um, be creating a lot of injury down the road. Because as long as she can recover from it, as long as she's managing her recovery and her fatigue levels, and as long as she's giving the tissues that are being stressed out here, i.e. the kneecap or the knee region and the lower back, as long as she's giving those areas enough time to recover, uh, or maybe she recovers like a beast, then there's no reason why there would be any, um, any injuries occurring. But of course, given the amount of volume and frequency that she might need to do to, in order to get a lot more weight on that barbell long term, and I'm guessing that she wants to be able to train for a long, long, long time and continue to progress to maybe triple body weight down the road, um, then it's something where you probably want to be looking at addressing this down the road. Um, I wouldn't tell somebody if I saw them lifting like this to stop squatting per se, especially if their, their, their goal is part of powerlifting, to squat and to squat heavy. But what I'd be looking at is saying, okay, we have maybe some stance issues here where she's not putting pressure or distributing weight evenly through her foot. But it could also just be that the weight here on this one rep max is exposing that a little bit more than normal. Um, but what we clearly do see here in this kind of position is a lot of adductors or adductors. That's what's causing all of this from the very, very start. So the adductors, your inner thigh muscles, they're gonna pull the knees in towards each other, which is what's happening, bang, there. It's also happening on the descent. You can see at the bottom position here, her knees are already collapsed inwards. Um, the adductors are really loading up. Now, this is not a bad thing because your adductors, your AD ductors, the inner thigh muscles, they are hip extensors. So they're actually the strongest hip extensor out of the pole of the squat. Your other hip extensor muscles are the hamstrings, which don't do much in a knee bend squat motion because their length stays quite static the entire time. But you also have the glutes, and the glutes are working in the bottom of a squat, 
But if you're looking at the relative strength amounts or how much a muscle can contribute, the AD ductors will always contribute a lot more than the glutes in the bottom of a squat. So it's not a bad thing that the adductors are loading up more. But when we see such a big collapse like this, it's telling us that the AD ductors are working a lot more than the abductors to keep the knees stacked out over the feet and not pulling inwards. So this could be due to her hip structure. It probably is as to why she biases more of the adductors and then hasn't been addressed long term. So it just keeps to continue to compound over time. Um, probably is part of her training as well. I'd be really curious to look and see if she is a, um, a sumo deadlifter um, because that would be another movement that's very adductor dominant and quad dominant um, and would potentially cause this to happen more and more and more and more. Again, not that this is going to be inherently bad and dangerous, but if you're looking at longevity and trying to get as much as you can out of your lifting long term, lifting more weights, there's going to be a point where she needs to be able to keep her knees stacked out a little bit better. But I just want to just uh, reiterate that seeing that he's collapsing in somewhat is not necessarily bad. This is probably a little bit too much for my liking because they don't, they're not able to travel out until the very top here, which is where the glutes will start to really kick in. Um, which just tells me that there's some, that she's missing out. She's missing out on being able to use her glutes as effectively through the first portion of her squat here until she starts to, um, yeah, finish off. So, Let's actually, um, let's have a look over on her Instagram and just have a look at some of her lifting. Okay, so yeah, sumo deadlifter. I'm curious to see whether this um, manifests at all in other, okay, this is still a very heavy weight. It's even, even heavier actually. That's, Again, it's, it's still happening. It's um, incredible amounts of strength here. Really, really strong, great positioning, but just that knee collapse, you can see the feet are moving all over the place as well. It's just not as stable as it could be, and more stability will help you produce more and more force through the, um, through the lift. Um, let's have a look. Okay, here's a lighter weight. And yeah, you can see the knees, they're still coming in, but not nearly as much. So she physically can keep the knees spread out. You can see she's actively trying to push them out. Um, this is a front squat, so there's a little bit more of a knees traveling forwards, as you can probably see in those, um, in those reps there. Let's see if it play, yeah, it will play again. Um, yeah, her knees sort of like shift forward a little bit. She's, again, dominating through the front of her foot and not through the, um, the heel as much. So I wonder what kind of shoes they look, they look like skate shoes or kind of just relaxed shoes. Um, I reckon she could afford to maybe use something a little bit more stable, but who knows. All right, do we have any more squats? Here we go. All right, this is a rear shot, which could be quite interesting to see as well. Um, again, great position, great setup. Just taking what looks to be a comfortable stance, looking at the ankles here. It's a serious amount of weight there. Yeah, just her feet are flying all over the place, body's dipping forward a lot through the lower back. Um, and, and honestly, there's not nearly as much in the glutes as there should be. A lot more ad AD ductors and a lot more, um, and a lot more cords. Um, so yeah, as, as I mentioned, as I suspected, um, should be a, um, a sumo deadlifter. So when you take a wide stance like this, you will feel a fair bit in the butt region, but it's actually not your glutes being loaded up as effectively as possible and being able to contribute as much to the lift. The glutes will work some, but not nearly as much as the inner thigh muscles, the adductors to extend the hip and the quads to push away. So the reason why she's chosen this is probably because it's most comfortable for her and she can lift the most weight with a smaller range of motion. And that's probably part of the do with maybe her hip structure there. But again, it's now manifesting where she's got a fantastic deadlift, but it may be affecting her long-term squat progressions. So I'd be looking personally at um, keep, keep doing this, keep squatting, but um, look at managing the way that you're, you're doing these exercises. So making sure you're recovering properly, you're not pushing the limits too much because you are putting your 
your joints and your lower back through a lot more stress and force than maybe they, they need to. But from an actual actionable training perspective, I'll be making sure you're including a lot of glute dominant exercises. So a lot more hinge based work with a closer stance. So Romanian deadlifts um, with a barbell or a trap bar. Um, I'd be looking at also incorporating a lot of single leg work to really hammer improvements in internal and external rotation because there's a lot of just instability and by the looks of it, just side to side discrepancies, which are always going to be there to a degree. Um, but incorporating some more split squats, some more lunges, some more um, Bulgarian split squats um, would be really, really useful. I'd really make sure you're adding in slow descents and pauses in the bottom there to really hone in on those discrepancies and uh, I guess limitations in internal to external rotation that seem to be apparent there. Um, but keep squatting, keep squatting, keep sumo deadlifting, um, but really hammer in those accessories. It will be frustrating, it will be really, really frustrating, but the more that you can look at addressing this, the, the more longevity you're going to have in your, in your training long term. I would probably, I don't want to say don't do one rep max anymore because it's part of the sport, but I'd really focus on making sure when you're squatting, your knees stay as stacked as possible and really think about um, having a very stable, well-grounded stance in the ground, not letting any deviations happen with your, with your foot pressure and your foot placement because that's a big, big energy leak right there. Don't be surprised if you see temporary decreases in the amount of weight you're lifting when you do this. Um, just know that long term, you're doing your body a big service by addressing these weaker links and it's going to give you a lot more longevity and help you push a lot further long term. All right, uh, let's go to the next video, which is from Michael Bakar. All right, so we have deadlifts, we have one, two, three, four, five. A lot of weight on there. I well more than I can handle. Um, let's see how we go. Looks like he's about to um, do the roll in, roll in and lift method, or he's going to walk into it. Walk into it. Yep, roll in. Okay. Don't know what happened at the end there with that little. Um, We'll pause. Um, all right, let's break this down. There's a fair bit going on with this. It's going through, okay, so the roll-in method is something that I really don't coach and I don't promote much when it comes to lifting. Um, obviously, Michael here, he's been lifting for a long time. I can tell that because there's a lot of weight on that bar. You don't get to that kind of weight on your first day, your first month, maybe even your first year of lifting, even if you are super duper strong naturally. Um, there is a degree of just time in the gym that's taken him to get to this point. So I'm guessing he's decided over time that he likes to do this, um, this roll-in method here. It works for him. Um, it's personally something that I don't recommend because it, 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 it adds in a lot of noise and variability that is just harder to maintain consistency over with your lifting. Anytime you introduce extra variables like this, they're more variables that need to be managed. And look, the absolute strongest people in the world, most of them do this roll-in. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. And it looks like he's controlling it kind of okay, but it's something that he's probably reversed for a long time. Uh, but what I do see here is something that really needs to be addressed. And that is when he pulls it in, if you look really closely here, he starts yanking up as the bar is still moving towards his shins. So... The bar's not traveling straight up, the bar's traveling in and then up and in at the same time. Which, again, is probably why we're seeing so much rolling around with his body and hitching, even though like it is a one rep max, you're gonna see a little bit of technique breakdown there. But to me, when I see this, I just see a lot of inconsistencies and sloppiness to the lifting. Clearly, very, very heavy weight, very strong guy but that's something that really needs to be looked at a little bit more closely is just how he's setting things up. Because as he rolls this barbell in, you see it, yeah, in and up, in and up, and then a lot of just shakiness on the way up. And on the way down, he's just sort of, probably just lowering it down, but I don't know why I didn't lower it all the way down. One of the pause there just to sort of feel the weights. Um, but you yeah, look, not bad. 
Um, I'd be curious, so Michael sent me over another video as well, which I'm guessing he has a lighter weight. So let's see if he does the same kind of um, technique here. Looks like he's gonna, yeah, do the roll in. Oh, okay, so, so he did roll it in, but then he actually paused, which kind of negates the roll in in general. Okay, it's a lot of weight, a lot of reps, bit of a bounce there, probably a back down set. Okay. Um, all right, so it's clearly something where my first instinct when I saw this was that Michael is doing that roll in as part of his typical pre-lift ritual, similar to how, uh, how Veggie Lifts was doing the, the same setup and twiddle of her leg, um, but it looks very different. Okay, looking at how he approaches a lighter weight versus a heavier weight, there's a big difference there, where he's rolled it all the way in, but then he pauses so he's rolling in, he, he resets his hip position, and then he drives up. So it's very, very different. So what this tells me is I'd say, look, Michael, I would pick one, whichever one you want to do, start from a dead stop, and if you do, or, or start with the roll in, I'd probably be more biased to say start with the, um, the dead stop off the ground, just there. Get that barbell placed over your shoelaces, over the midfoot, and start from there. Don't add in that extra roll. Um, see, I know a lot of guys lifting a lot of weight do that, but it's not necessarily gonna be the best thing when it adds in so much variability. Because again, when we look at the way there's lifting here, clearly very strong, but it just looks very inconsistent and kind of sloppy the way he's moving his body up and down. He's sort of like craning a lot more through his back as opposed to really pushing with his legs, not really reaching full extension or lockouts here either. Um, and it's that bottom, that bottom third, where he's really rushing and dumping the weight down and bouncing it back up, where there's really not much thought given to that eccentric. So when I see that this kind of lifting here, clearly just a lot of raw strength, same as this, uh, this one rep max here, so much raw strength, but you can really see how the hips are rising up quicker and it's just wrenching up through the back. Now, using your back muscles is not wrong, but when it comes to the expense of you being able to get as much as you can out of your legs, which I know that he could, if he used his legs more to think about pressing the ground away from him, to push, um, to push the world away, he would get so much more out of his lifting. Um, and also just spending a bit more time in that bottom third where he, he didn't even, he just dropped it from the knees here. And on the, um, the other video, he's all just bounces. I'd really be looking at incorporating a lot more um, slow eccentric and spending time in that bottom range of motion. You're gonna build so much more leg strength there, which is gonna carry over to helping with all of your deadlifting long-term and you won't be relying as much on your back. Um, so I'll be using things like snatch grip deadlifts, deficit deadlifts, trap bar deadlifts, anything that gets you using more and more of your leg muscles and keeping more of an upright torso will be so beneficial. I'd also add in slow eccentrics, four to six second lowerings. I'd do pauses in the bottom position, like hovering just off the ground. That would be great variation to start adding into your lifting. But overall, hey, look, great work, a lot of weight there. Um, well done. We can now get you even stronger. I know we can get so much more out of your lifting long term from this. All right, let's go on to another deadlift video. So this is from Kayla, and I did peek at the first few seconds of this. You can see her crew in the background checking her out. I love this angle. First of all, like when it comes to deadlifting, I love being able to see things from the side um, because I can just see how things are positioned with the bar placement over the foot and relative to the shoulders and the, um, and the shoulder blades. All right, so good, good starting position there. Setting yourself up. Not bad, not bad. Some things we can improve here. So first of all, let's have a look at this start position here. Pretty good, so this is where she starts lifting from. Not too bad, the bar's over the midfoot, and um, you can see the barbell is 
that her shoulder blade region is roughly over the bar, which is a good starting position to be in, that I've spoken about in other videos in the past. Although it looks like her shoulders are probably directly over the bar, just slightly, and maybe her shoulder blades could be slightly forwards. So maybe taking a slightly higher hip position would help to shift the shoulder blades forwards a little bit more into a stronger position. The reason why I say that is when she starts to lift, you're gonna see um, her body position changing. There. So that first motion from here, when the bar's on the ground, to when she starts pulling against it, what happens is she naturally shifts her bum up and pulls the shoulder blades forwards into that better start position. And it's not until this point here where the weight starts lifting off the ground. So I'll just say, start in that position. Start there. That's a stronger position. It's a more mechanically efficient position. You better engage your glutes better. You better just really press away and drive everything up to, um, to lift that weight. Other thing that's happening here, if you watch the bar, is the bar moves just ever so slightly forwards of her, um, of her starting position. So it starts here, right over the midfoot. When she starts to lift, look at that little deviation there. Bang, it's drifting forwards. And then comes forwards even a little bit more. Yeah, and you can even see like right here. Okay, look at that. The barbell, oops, let's go back a little bit. So the barbell is now pretty much over her big toes in front of her foot, whereas it started before over the midfoot. So this is something that really needs to be um, addressed because again, it's adding in just that little bit of um, extra variability. It's causing a bit of rounding to the back. Is rounding bad? Not necessarily, especially similar to, um, to veggie lifts, knee collapse there. It's not necessarily gonna be a death sentence, it just means that you're gonna be exposing the muscles to a little bit more force, but your body can handle it. If you can recover from that, it's no issue whatsoever. And having a little bit of rounding is just her body getting into the most efficient position to be able to lift that weight. This is all very easily fixed though, okay? So what's happening is Kayla's having a hard time keeping that barbell fixed up against her body as she comes up. Now you could cue things like saying, hey, pull the bar back into your body more, use more of your lats, drop those shoulders down. But the simplest thing that I would say here is to get a pair of knee sleeves and chuck them around your shins. Okay, so when I was doing a lot of powerlifting style work years ago, I would always do that because in order for you to lift that weight, you wanna keep it over your center of gravity, over your midfoot. That's gonna be the strongest position. You want that bar to travel up from there in a straight vertical line as well. But if you're thinking about protecting your shins because you have delicate shins, just like everybody does, you're going to be slightly pushing that barbell away from you or letting the barbell drift away from you as this internal protective mechanism to try, and, to, try to avoid the pain. Because no matter how tough you are, you're gonna feel that barbell smashing into your shins, scraping up your shins, and it's going to be uncomfortable. No matter how strong or pain resilient you are or how hardcore you are, it's going to happen. So putting on some shin pads helps to remove that subconscious desire to release tension in your upper body to let the bar drift away from you or even to, to pull it away from you slightly to avoid smashing your shins. The reason why this is so important is, if you look here, look how far back Kayla snaps her body back. Let's go from the start. Watch how much she really throws her shoulders and her head back to finish off the rep. That, like coming up, that is a lockout. That's lockout. But this is where she takes it to that extra degree of bang, heaving it backwards. Why is she doing that? And you can see just how much that's caused just that compression through the lower back the lumbar erectors there. Now, why is she doing that? It's because at this point here, uh, where are we? Yeah, at around this point here, the barbell weight is so far in front, the barbell weight is so far in front of her body that in order for her to finish off the weight, she feels like she has to throw everything back, just to throw her head back or to throw her shoulders back just to complete the rep. Where it shouldn't be thinking about heaving back, it should be still be thinking about pushing with your legs into the ground to finish off the rep. But you can also see just how her feet are, look at her feet closely here, just sort of like shifting back and forth, like whoop whoop on her foot 
as she goes through the rep. Let's watch that again. Watch her feet. Yeah. Just the whole body just sort of rocking back and forth as she's trying to manage this weight moving in space. That would all be eliminated if she put those shin pads on. It would help her keep that tighter, more rigid upper body position and not think so much about heaving back with her shoulders and her head. And instead just think about pressing away with her, her strong leg muscles instead. Because yeah, that there, that's the lockout. Going back further isn't doing you any favors. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not helping. But it's just there because it's your, your brain's best way that it can think of to manage the load. If the load didn't travel forwards because you weren't trying to protect your shins, your brain will no longer try to think about managing a load so far away from your body, so it won't want you to throw your head and your shoulders back. Um, so yeah, shin pads, simple fix. Simple, simple fix. That will make, that'll make a humongous difference to the lifting overall. All right, that's it for today, guys. I didn't want to go further into more videos just because this video is probably already taking a lot longer than I thought it would already. But I can come back to these and do more videos just like this if you guys like. So just leave me a comment below to let me know. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to stay up to date. And I'll see you all next time.